Up to this day, we treat depression according to monoamine theory. We believe that depression is caused by deficiency of neurotransmission, which can be caused by low levels of serotonin and norepinephrine and to a lesser extent dopamine in the synapse. So we believe that depression is caused by decreasing amount of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse. So how to treat depression? The most obvious approach is to increase the amount of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse. And drugs that cause increase in serotonin or norepinephrine in the synapse we call antidepressants. One of the antidepressants called mirtazapine. Mirtazapine is a typical antidepressant because of his multiple effects. First of all, mirtazapine blocks alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. And to explain this, we have to know how adrenergic neurons work. So we have presynaptic neuron, synapse, and postsynaptic neuron. Adrenergic neurons uptake tyrosine. Once tyrosine appears inside the neuron, tyrosine undergoes hydroxylation by red limiting enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase with formation of L-DOPA. Then L-DOPA by DOPA decarboxylase is converted to dopamine. Once dopamine is formed, vesicular monoamine transporter puts dopamine inside the vesicles. In the vesicles, dopamine molecules undergo conversion to norepinephrine. And in this form, norepinephrine is stored inside the neuron. But once depolarization occurs, Neuron pushes vesicle into the synapse. We call this process exocytosis. As a result, vesicle becomes destroyed and norepinephrine molecules income to the synapse. On postsynaptic neuron, we have numerous adrenergic receptors. It's alpha-1 receptor, beta-1 receptor, and beta-2 receptor. Once norepinephrine molecules appear in the synapse, most of them immediately bind to adrenergic receptors. With binding, they activate adrenergic receptors, and the activation of adrenergic receptors improve mood and increase energy. Some of the norepinephrine molecules bind to alpha-2 receptor on presynaptic neuron, which is autoreceptor. With activation, this receptor inhibits the exocytosis of norepinephrine vesicles into the synapse. So, this receptor provides reciprocal regulation. But what happens to norepinephrine molecules that simply did not have time to bind to any receptor? On presynaptic neuron, we have norepinephrine transporter called NAD. This transporter uptakes free norepinephrine molecules and deliver them back to the presynaptic neuron, where the big bad boy monoamine oxidase B waiting for them. Most of the delivered norepinephrine molecules have a tragic fate. Monoamine oxidase uptake and destroy them. But some norepinephrine molecules are able to slip away from monoamine oxidase, and such molecules income to norepinephrine molecules inside the vesicles thereby replenishing norepinephrine pool. Mirtazapine blocks alpha-2 receptor on presynaptic neuron. Thereby, now norepinephrine cannot bind to alpha-2 receptor. Without binding of norepinephrine, alpha-2 receptor cannot be activated. And without alpha-2 receptor, the reciprocal inhibition becomes impossible. And without reciprocal inhibition, the exocytosis of norepinephrine into the synapse increase. And from this moment, step by step, norepinephrine molecules begin to accumulate in the synapse. In the synapse, norepinephrine molecules search for adrenergic receptors on postsynaptic neuron. And once they bind to adrenergic receptors, they activate them. And the higher the stimulation of adrenergic receptors, the higher the adrenergic effect, and thereby the better becomes the mood and the more energy increase. But also, on postsynaptic neuron, we have histamine type 1 receptors. These receptors in the CNS provide neurotransmission. 
it's important to know because mirtazapine also blocks H1 receptors. And with blockage of H1 receptor, the speed of the neurotransmission decreases and this causes sedation. So mirtazapine blocks alpha-2 receptors, this causes decrease in reciprocal inhibition, and without reciprocal inhibition, the exocytosis of norepinephrine into the synapse increases. With increase in norepinephrine in the synapse, adrenergic effect increases, as a result, mood becomes better and also energy increase. But also, mirtazapine blocks H1 receptor. This causes decrease in the rate of neurotransmission, and this manifests as sedation. And sedation we consider as a side effect. In addition to this, mirtazapine blocks type 2 and type 3 serotonin receptors. And to explain this, we have to know how serotonin neurons work. So we have presynaptic neuron, synapse, and postsynaptic neuron. Serotonin neurons uptake tryptophan. Once tryptophan appears inside the neuron, tryptophan undergo hydroxylation by rate-limiting enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase with formation of serotonin. Once serotonin is formed, vesicular monoamine transporter puts serotonin inside the vesicles. And in this form, serotonin is stored inside the neuron. But once depolarization occurs, neuron pushes vesicle into the synapse. We call this process exocytosis. As a result, vesicle becomes destroyed and serotonin molecules income to the synapse. On postsynaptic neuron, we have numerous serotonin receptors. And once serotonin appears in the synapse, most of them immediately bind to serotonin receptors. With binding, they activate serotonin receptors, and activation of serotonin receptors improve mood and increase energy. Some of the serotonin molecules bind to serotonin 1 beta receptor on presynaptic neuron, which is autoreceptor. With activation, this receptor inhibits the exocytosis of serotonin vesicles into the synapse. So, this receptor provides reciprocal regulation. But what happens to serotonin molecules that simply did not have time to bind to any receptor? On presynaptic neuron, we have a serotonin transporter called SALT. This transporter uptakes free serotonin molecules and delivers them back to the presynaptic neuron, where the big bad boy monoamine oxidase A waiting for them. Most of the delivered serotonin molecules have a tragic fate. Monoamine oxidase uptake and destroy them. But some serotonin molecules are able to slip away from monoamine oxidase and such molecules income to the newly formed serotonin molecules, thereby replenishing serotonin pool. We have different subtypes of serotonin receptors. We believe that serotonin type 1 receptor is fully involved in regulation of mood. But also, we have type 2 and type 3 receptors. They also participate in regulation of mood and energy, but to a lesser extent. The specific feature of these receptors are their unique functions. Type 2 serotonin receptor is involved in regulation of appetite. With activation, this receptor causes decrease in appetite. And stimulation of type 3 serotonin receptor can cause nausea and vomiting. Mirtazapine blocks both serotonin type 2 receptor and serotonin type 3 receptors. With blockage, serotonin molecules cannot bind to these receptors. Thereby, these serotonin receptors cannot be activated. But also, it causes increase in free unbinded serotonin molecules in the synapse. And now, these serotonin molecules will come to the only receptor available, which is serotonin type 1 receptor. So now, the stimulation of serotonin type 1 receptor becomes even stronger. And because it's the major serotonin receptor involved in regulation of mood, with increasing stimulation of this receptor, mood becomes better and energy increase. 
but also because type 2 and type 3 serotonin receptors have their own unique functions, mirtazapine cause additional effects. First of all, decrease in stimulation of type 2 serotonin receptor can cause increase in appetite, which potentially can cause a weight gain. And decrease in stimulation of type 3 serotonin receptor can cause decrease in nausea and vomiting. We call this antiemetic effect. So by blockage of serotonin type 2 receptors, mirtazapine can cause increase in appetite and thereby weight gain, which we consider a side defect. By blockage of serotonin type 3 receptors, mirtazapine can decrease nausea and vomiting. So mirtazapine has moderate antiemetic effect. And by blockage of both type 2 and type 3 receptors, mirtazapine increases the amount of free serotonin molecules in the synapse. This causes increase in stimulation of serotonin type 1 receptor that results in improvement of mood and increase in energy.